Hi everyone, my name is Frank Morrison and I'm the illustrator for Above the Rim. But I love drawing it. I love the emotion. I love the freedom of the elongation that I can put in the basketball. And so when I was when I got the book, I was like, oh my gosh, are you serious? Now I have all these wonderful sketches and I finally get to paint something like this for children. Here I'm thinking, well, how can I make him look epic? You throw that sun in the back, you backlight it, and then you have that sun coming up from behind and he's coming through and he's up in the air and he's just killing it. I mean, with the clouds, you kind of like kind of composition, put the composition where they're not too heavy, where you're giving enough space where that ball is up there in the air, it's by itself, and he's above the rim. I do a lot of books on civil rights, and what I didn't realize is the struggle that everyone went through and how they prepared the struggle and even preparing to go to the South. Like this page kind of capture it. You have to be yelled at, screamed at, humiliated to prepare yourself for what you are gonna be getting ready to go through when you get to, once you pass that Mason Dixon line. So this page is capturing the guys yelling at them and they would blow smoke in their faces and throw things at them and, sit them down and they just have to sit there and, and take it. They have to sit there and take it, you know, and prepare. When I painted this page, I wanted to show that struggle. I wanted to show that struggle and I wanted to sit on him with the basketball. And then we have the Confederate flag, of course, but the only thing that's in color in this book, on this page, if you can see it, is knowledge. That instead of the flag being red and blue and white, I made the book red. Like it's fire, that's the key to, that's the key, information, knowledge. And that's why I want to make sure, that's what this thing is about. We want to make sure we can be educated. You know, it was a beautiful marriage. I was able to show you have sports and then you have this history where you can understand why, why we, the NBA is now open to everyone and what it took for them to open up the doors so they could stop the um, segregation that was going on, how they stood up for their, the players. You know, so it's just, you know, it's nice to be able to show those parts and then, then doing the research on finding them is, is kind of like heart wrenching because you have to, now I have to watch kids being sprayed and I'm like trying to have kids flying. You have to be, see kids being egged and yelled at at countertops and I'm used to seeing kids running around free. And now I have to look back and see all those those images, and, and you know it's kind of like it's kind of heart wrenching. It's kind of tough for me to do that because I, I like to see kids in a positive light. Uh, but I know this was necessary, and I hope when other children see pages like this, they realize how important they are because they went all through all this for them. You know, I try to make every picture, every picture my favorite one, but some of them do stand out because of the situations. This is my favorite image. But the reason why I like this image is because it gave me a chance to incorporate some of my fine art in my illustration together. My thing is with the fine art, I try to make it so the average person can enjoy the piece. We can see the beauty even in the even in some of the worst areas where we can see some bad areas. So this gave me a chance to show them playing stickball. And then we have the catcher. And I love that I took through this little hat on him, which is very cool. It's like a navigator hat. And then we have that baseball. I don't know if you can see it, but baseball is coming. He's about to get it in and his one shirt is tucked in. We got the stripe, you know, the plaid. We got his shoes, he's killing the little Buster, look like Buster Brown shoes. You know, we got the crack on the, the um the sidewalk. You know, when I when I get in this type of rhythm, and this is like the first page, I know that the rest of the book is gonna be kick butt. I can't I love this page too, believe it or not. Not because the subject matter, just because I was able to capture that shadow right there. Isn't that expression, that expression that he had, that whole that disgust. 
I was gonna put a couple more people coming in or this and that, but I thought just having this guy looking like sinister from the corner like that, I just love that look, you know, he's just looking around, he's looking, I thought that was, that set a cool move and then here's that Urban Decay thing, the stuff that I throw in here. When you look at this page, you won't find a couple of things in the text. I mean, I like throwing in the show atmosphere. There's nothing to say about the sports pages. So, but I put the sports pages in and these guys are having a very heated conversation about who won the game last night. And then you have a basketball that has a little Band-Aid on it. Then you have to have the girls with the attitude, you know, cause they're, they're like, you girl, you know what I'm saying? No, but you know, you know. So I throw them in there. Just throw that little attitude in there. And of course, even though he's having his heated conversation up here, he's blowing his bubble gum. I go, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. And so I have a story within the story and the images. Now the text didn't call for this. It just called for him coming up to basketball court. He's about to go and get this next move. When I'm, when I'm doing books, historical books, I have to have all the recent research and uh, images as possible. So what I do with Elgin, what I do with Elgin is I, first I, I Google him and I pulled up all the images and make a file and I print them out and I have those on the, on the easel. Uh, his profile, his face, his hair changed over the years. And then, um, and so what I want to do is I have those images Then I have to make sure the uniforms match because he played on his, uh, one team in the game and he's at the Lakers at the end. So you want to make sure that you have all the uniforms because they change colors and names actually. So you want to make sure you have, I made sure I had all that stuff. And even with the, um, when he won the award, uh, I had to have an image of that trophy. So I had that for photo references. And believe it or not, I was Googling his games, seeing some of his moves and his postures and that kind of stuff. So I do a whole file that um, that's ridiculous that's on my computer where it's just all this, maybe like 400 images in that one folder and that way I can go back and forth for my references if I need to know what things look like and, and go from there. This page. <laughs> now, believe it or not, this is an easy page. And that's why it's so challenging for me. There is no real movement in it. There's no real movement. No, it's not like um, even this page has a great composition. It has this V that goes into it. You know, it's actually like a diamond. If you look at the composition, you have like a diamond going on. These guys are inside of the diamond. If you want to trip me up on, on anything, give me a page where people are just standing. I got to have some kind of movement. Got to be some kind of flair. Something goes on with this. So what I did is I kind of arched his back a little over here to give me some kind of like movement. I leaned him forward and hands sticking out. But these pages right here are so boring to me that it just drives me crazy to paint them. And there's nothing I can do to get around them. So it's like, you have to have a dead one. He's handing him a key. And this is where he's showing where they're actually treating him with pride and dignity and giving him a key after they protested about them not being, them being excluded from being able to stay, uh, stay at hotels. So I had to show that. And this was the best way I could do it. My composition is this way, where he's staying above them. And this, so it gave me, gave me some kind of, um, uh, gave me some kind of pleasure because as this, Filling, filling their composition out. But the hardest pages for me are pages where people are just standing still because I'm used to so much movement. <laughs> That's, I don't know if anyone knew that, but now you know. <laughs> you know I, the other thing I have to tell you guys is that I was a huge, huge fan of Good Times. Anybody know that show, Good Times? I was a huge fan. I still am. I still am a huge fan of Good Times. And so, the you know, everyone knows that JJ is a painter and all that. And the artist that really painted, I'm sure everyone knows, Brian did a great book on it. It's called Ernie Barnes. And Ernie Barnes was the master of that time of mannerism. And so my style I paint in is, top, is called mannerism. And so I was, being that I was influenced by him, he would elongate everything. Same, hey, if you look at back at the Renaissance painters like Michelangelo, uh, when you look at the Sixteen Chapel, you see how everything is kind of elongated and kind of juxtaposed. Everybody's like doing these action poses. 
So I love that style because I was a graffiti artist. And when I wanted to make a style, when I was, when I sat down with a gallery, they're like, Frank, you know, we love what you paint here, but you can't tell yours from anyone else's. And I was like, what do, you, what do you mean? What do you mean? You can't tell my work from anyone. Anyway. I did watercolor at that time. And so they were like, well, find a style, find something that you like. And I was like, well, what do I like? I like it's like peanut butter and, and chocolate. I, I wonder what can I ma match together like that? I love doing graffiti, which is elongated expression letters. letters. And I love mannerism. I love the way JJ painted on Good Times. I love the way Ernie Barnes painted. And so what I did is I infused those together. I infused those letters and that style. And that way, when you do see pages like, let's say this, when you do see pages like this, I see letters, C, I, and then I put a G. And that's what I kind of put my letters like. I try to make letters, my characters look like my letters because they're all elongated. And so I want to give a shout out to Ernie Barnes. And I want to give a shout out to any artist that I looked at over the years, especially Al Hirschfield as well, and how we elongated. I like to be included in history as one of those elongated manneristic guys. <laughs>